you are watching the Elevation Mentor Show. And today I have a very special guest, Anita. Thank you for being on the show. You are so welcome. I appreciate your invitation. Okay. Um, I'd like to start out by having you tell us who you are and what do you do? Okay. So my name is Anita Stoudmire. I am a licensed professional counselor by trade. That's what I do full time. I am also a content creator online. So I have an Instagram platform called Better Love Movement. It is also a coaching program. It is also a YouTube channel. Um, I have a Facebook page all under that name, Better Love Movement. And I create content uh, in relationship to uh, dating and relationships and just what's going on in the culture right now between men and women. Okay. Yeah, very important for what's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so Anita, what is your background? So I um, was once a school teacher. So being a therapist is my second career. Interesting. I was once a school teacher many, many, many years ago and uh, married, had three children, uh, stayed at home with those children for 12 years and then attempted to go back to teaching and it wasn't as fun by then. Uh, and then I decided, you know, what else can I do? What else do I like doing? And I said, you know, I think I'm going to become a therapist because I really enjoy helping people and listening and, you know, just helping people find their way and inspire them. And so I, I went back to school and got a master's degree in professional counseling, became a therapist, opened my own private practice. And in the interim of doing that, you know, I also got kind of pushed into this dating and relationship space because I, right now I specialize in couples therapy. So that's primarily what I do. I see couples and so have lots of thoughts and opinions about that. And that's when I went online and I created the Better Love Movement. So started at a, as a podcast and then became an Instagram platform, a YouTube channel and all of that. So um, love what I do. I love being a therapist and I love being a content creator. Okay. I like that you had the courage to change your career. And the fact that you, yeah, have I've been encouraging people to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that you have your own practice. practice. That's yep. impressive. Yep. Pretty good. So you mentioned that you, thank you. You mentioned you're married and have um, three kids. Could you explain like your relationship status in the past and now? Yeah. So I was married, um, had three children and, uh, I did divorce. We were living in Cleveland, Ohio at the time, and then relocated here to Virginia. I've been here ever since about 20 years, um, have been single that whole time. And one of the greatest gifts that my divorce gave me was I went on a path of trying to figure out number one, how to choose a really good partner. And number two, if I chose someone and got married, how to stay married again. So that's what I've done over the last 20 plus years is I have studied everything I can get my hands on as far as when it comes to how to choose a good partner and then how to stay married once married to that person. That was something that unfortunately, most of us, we never learned that. We never learned how to choose a good partner and we never learned how to stay married if we get married. Hmm. You're a very, um, very valuable person. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we can learn a lot from, you know, married people and divorced people. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So Anita, did you, um, did you grow up in a church or how did you grow so, up? I have a very interesting, uh, spiritual background in that, uh, my grandmother was AME, uh, African Methodist Episcopal. That's, that's our family's, um, denomination. So we did very much grow up in church uh, and back then, church was an all, all day affair. You usually got there around <laughs> nine thirty, and my mother uh, and my grandmother and my grandmother's daughters were all like ushers, or they did you know volunteered in some way in the church. And church was very long back then. And then you ate at the church, like when church was over, 
Um, you may have a Bible study, you would eat there. It was like an all day affair. So we wouldn't come home till six, seven o'clock on Sunday, but we would go around nine, nine thirty, all day affair. Um, then my mother, when I turned nine, my mother became a Jehovah's witness. Oh, okay. So she has been a Jehovah's witness for the last 45 years. She's been a Jehovah's witness. So I had that experience of going to the hall with her um, and experiencing that religion. And then once I left her home, I went on a quest. I kind of went on a search for, you know, what is right for me? Because I'm I'm a big believer in, yes, there are certain things that get passed down to us from our family. Of course, you know, my genetics got passed down to me from my family, but I don't believe religion should be one of those things. I think we need to go on a quest and figure out what works for us. Like I didn't have to, you know, take on AME or I didn't have to take on Jehovah's Witness. I really needed to figure out what worked for me. And so from about 18 to 25, that's what I did. I explored a lot of different religions. I explored Nation of Islam and being Muslim. I explored um, all kinds of Hindu, Buddhist, all kinds of different faiths and practices and all kinds of forms of spirituality just to see what would fit me, you know, what made sense to me. You know, what did I feel in my spirit? And I wound up going to a Christian church, a non-denominational Christian church. And that kind of spoke to me just based on knowing God all these years and being introduced to him through my mother and my grandmother, uh, my grandfather. And, you know, I just said, okay, this Christianity makes sense to me. I didn't necessarily need a specific sect of religion. So Baptist, Methodist, you know, I didn't really need Protestant. I just knew that that aligned with who I was. And I've had many kind of what I call run-ins or come to Jesus moments that have definitely solidified my faith. So that made it clear to me, yes, I, you know, I believe in God, I believe Jesus, and I believe in the Bible. And when I put those principles into practice, life worked out a lot better. When I ignored those principles, there were negative consequences. So that kind of made sense to me. Like, okay, this, this makes sense to me. And so now I would say I am Christian. I'm a Christ follower. Um, I attend a non-denominational Christian church, um, but that's what feels right to me. Um, I also have other spiritual beliefs that, you know, some people think are a little woo-woo, um, but I'm a big believer in uh, like law of attraction Okay. And um, subconscious mind, you know, I'm a big believer in that, that what we think, you know, our thoughts are very powerful and they can bring into our existence the things yes. that we think. Yes. So we got to be careful about whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing, because either way is coming. So we got to be really, really careful about that. So I talk about that a lot, too. I talk about some other just other spiritual practices um, on my channel. I talk about faith, of course and uh, how it all relates to dating, relationships, what's God's design for us in terms of our relationships. I talk about all of that. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I know what you mean too about law of attraction. So law of attraction, law of assumption. There are 12, there are actually 12 spiritual laws that I talk to people about. And I try to give them little nuggets here and there, and I want them to try it out just to see how it works for them. Because a lot of people are like, well, that, that sounds kind of out there. I'm like, just try it. See how it works for you. See what results you get. That's really the best teacher is your own results. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, so Anita, so as a counselor, so you're a therapist, so- mm -hmm. What kind of clients do you see? You mentioned couples, right? Yeah. Yes. Right now, this year, my practice niche down. I used to see individuals um, and couples, but I have a heart for couples right now because we are in a state of crisis. We're in a state of crisis. The marriage rate is going down. And even though the divorce rate is going down, it's because the marriage rate is going down. And one of the things I talk to people about all the time is we need healthy marriages. Like we, our society would crumble if people didn't get married. If people stopped getting married and they stopped having children, our society would be in trouble. We need healthy marriages. We need healthy families. That is the cornerstone of a healthy society. 
And so if that starts going awry, if people are no longer getting married, if people are no longer having children, we're going to start to see problems within society. So I'm very, very passionate about that. Um, and that's why I niche my practice down because I see a lot of couples in crisis, a lot of, you know, I have a couple right now. I just got a call from them earlier today. The wife is going to come in tomorrow and they just had a baby. Um, the husband wants to leave the marriage, you know, they are in crisis. And so I want to do everything I can to try to save families and to try to save marriages. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are in a crisis and it seems like some people can't see that we're in a crisis. Yeah, 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 we are. So um, when you're when you're counseling, what's the most uh, recurring problem that you see? So right now I'm seeing, especially amongst my couples, is um, a lack of acceptance, a lack of acceptance for each other, a lack of compatibility. That's huge. A lot of couples, about 75% of them uh, are not compatible, you know, and I wrote my first book called Choose Well. I wrote that book because what a lot of people don't realize is relationship success, the first part of it depends on the person you choose. That's a big part of relationship success. I myself have been very transparent in telling people I did not make a good choice. Like I did not make a good choice in the partner that I chose. We were not aligned in our values or our morals. Um, we were not compatible. And um, which is, that's what led me on this quest. Like, okay, well then what does a good partner look like? What does a good husband look like for me? You know, and part of that is I have to take into account who I am. But part of that is just, you know, there are some basic traits, regardless of whether it's me, you, or any other woman, there's some basic traits of what a good husband looks like. Okay. And so I had to learn those things and then I had to tailor it to me. I had to figure out, okay, this is what a good man looks like. And then what does Anita need? And so now I have a better grasp of that. Okay. So this is, these are the core values of a good man. And then there's some things I can sprinkle on top that Anita needs. And that's what I teach people how to do how to really choose a good partner and a good person for them. And so that's the, that's probably the biggest one is people are just not compatible. People are basing who they choose on feelings and love when okay. there are so many other things, right, for them to consider. And they're not considering that. Okay. And some of those things, those are in your book? Choose well? Yes, choose well. Choose well, a simple formula to determine the best man for you. So I wrote a book for women. I wrote two books for women. The first one is for single women. It's called Choose Well. The second book is for women already in relationships. It's called Do Well, A Feminine Woman's Guide to Relationship Success. So once you've made your choice and you're in your relationship, there is that second book that teaches you the skills you're going to need to maintain the relationship. So I've always, that's, that's my theory. Everyone knows my theory, which is two things. The first one is you have to choose well. The second one is you have to do well. So if you can do those two things effectively, you can have a happy, healthy, long-term marriage. But we usually mess up in one form or another. So for me, I messed up in the first part. I did not choose well. I think I was a great wife. I think I did all the things that I outline in my second book. But see, what a lot of women don't realize is, is if you choose the wrong person, it doesn't matter how well you do. You'll never outdo the person that you chose. So you have to do both. You have to choose well and you have to do well. Okay, so you have your two books, Choose Well and Do Well. Right. Okay, so Anita, I want to ask you about this choose well thing. Mm -hmm. uh, do you really think that it is the woman choosing because it is the man, the man is the one that is approaching you and if he approaches you at all and asks right. you. Right, the woman has veto power and that is a very powerful position to be in. And a lot of us, we don't use it enough. We think that because a man is interested in us that we should accept him and we shouldn't. Like that's just called, so what? Mm -hmm. Okay, there are a lot of men who are interested in me. I have the veto power. 
I get to determine whether I accept or whether I reject. And, and too many women are not utilizing that power. They are accepting every man that's interested in them. And then when it gets further down the road, they may realize, oh, wow, there's some things about this guy that I, either I don't like, we're not compatible, he's not a good fit for me. Um, and yes, that man may propose, he may, you know, propose marriage. And, you know, I would then tell a woman, you know, be mindful. Do you want to accept that proposal? Because just because a man proposes doesn't mean you have to say yes. Okay. But that's what I'm seeing. A lot of women that are just excited that a man is interested in them. Yeah. And that's not, that's not enough. That's not enough. So by choosing well, saying no more, saying no yeah. to the right person. Yep. <laughs> that's it. You, you have veto power. You can veto, you know, and that's where vetting comes in. So a man is interested in me and I, I very quickly determine, do I, do I, am I interested back? So I, I can determine that in one day. Am mm -hmm. I interested back? Maybe yes, maybe no. Let's say it's yes. Oh, oh, this gentleman is interesting. Let me see what he's talking about. The second that happens, I start vetting him. I start vetting him to see what level of interest I'm going to actually have. So maybe the first level of interest is he's attractive. He seems gentlemanly. You know, he seems kind. Like, that's all I know. Mm -hmm. Then as time goes on, I'm also going to vet him based on how he treats me and how he treats others. That's super important. And we don't put enough emphasis on that. How do I feel when I'm with him? Okay. How does he treat me? How does he treat others? We don't put enough emphasis on that. Today, it's what did he buy me? Where did he take me? How fun is it? How interesting, you know, how entertained am I? No, that's not a good long-term strategy for vetting a man. Because right now, a lot of men are a three-ring circus. <laughs> they will provide a three ring circus. They will take you to a fancy place or they will dress up or they will, you know, they may buy you something. That doesn't tell me anything about his character. That's what I'm really after. Okay, Anita. So um, let me ask you this. What advice would you give to women who want to be married? So I want you to prepare your heart for marriage. Um, and it's funny you asked that. I'm going to see if I can put my, my hand on. Uh, I recently, I may not be able to put my hand on it. I recently interviewed an author, uh, Angela, Dr. Angela Carswell. She wrote a fabulous book called The Top Shelf Wife. And what I loved about her book is very comprehensive. Like she laid out the blueprint of what a good wife is. And when I was reading it, I was like, Oh my, I've never seen this done in this way. Like very comprehensive. She has um, five, um, so they're like five tenets and under each of those tenets are different attitudes, different ways of being, um, things that you do. I mean, it was fabulous. And I was like, wow, I've never seen something this comprehensive when we're talking about preparing your heart and preparing your body and preparing your space to become a wife. But that's in fact what she did. She literally laid it all out. She talked about things from being fit and healthy, uh, homemaking skills. She talked about um, attitudes that women who are wives have. They have an easy smile, which I've always, I've always told women that, that when your husband comes home or when you see your husband, you should smile. That should be a natural response that when you see your man, you smile and it should come easy. And she talked about like all of these different things in that formula. And I thought, yeah, people need to definitely get this book. So there is a formula there. Is, and, and then she went even further and talked about all of the things and how you can start practicing them now before you even get married. So you can practice them on the men in your life. You can practice them on your friends. You can practice them with your family. And so I was like, this is absolutely perfect. Because again, I tell women that you should be practicing your skills now. 
You should become emotionally regulated now. You should practice being a supporter now. You should practice your easy smile now. You can do those things now. So before your husband even appears, you're already used to homemaking, cooking, knowing how to keep a tidy home, knowing how to be organized. Like you're already kind of in that mindset now. So if, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to shout out her book because it was so fabulous. It's called The Top Shelf Wife. It's by Dr. Angela Carswell. Excellent book. The Top Shelf Wife. Yep. Okay. It sounds good. Mm-hmm. What if you don't like cooking? <laughs> you got to learn, especially if you want to be a mother, because <laughs> cooking is love. You know, feeding your family is love. It's a form of love. So not only do I cook for my family regularly, I grow the vegetables that I cook. So it's love. Yeah. It's, it's nourishment. When you think about it, you want to be able to nourish your family from your own hands. That's, That's how important it is. That's an interesting way to see it. Because mm -hmm. um, I think we see it as work. Mm -mm. I don't. <laughs> I love cooking. I love cooking. I love growing my garden. Yeah. I want you to see it as another expression of your love and care for your husband and your family. Cooking is love. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Anita, um, what are some ways that women can get married? faster into the right person? Well, the, the cornerstone of every woman's um, worth is her self-esteem. You know, she has to know her self-worth and her self-esteem. Now, I'm not necessarily going to guarantee it's going to happen faster because unfortunately, right now, we are in a culture that does not promote marriage. I agree so, with that 1,000%. Yeah. 1,000%. So I don't have a hack for that. Like right now, the culture does not promote marriage. But here's the thing that I've been telling women. I told a client this just this morning and it's what I'm doing. Like I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm focused on myself. I'm focused on my life and my friends and my family and my pets and my work. You know, I'm focused on the things that bring me a lot of joy. I'm focused on the things that are a part of my purpose. and I'm not becoming despondent based on what I see in the world. Like sometimes we have to take our focus off of what's in the world because it can it can breed despondency, it can breed hopelessness. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a lot of women, oh, I'm just, I mean, it's crazy out here and this and that. Okay, your words are creating, your words are creating your life. I need you to stop looking at what's happening and focus on yourself, focus on God. That's what I'm doing. And that's why I'm happy. That's why I'm content because I'm not focusing on all this mess out here in the world. I'm not focused on that. Okay. So like we got to shift our focus. I think that a lot of women need to hear that message. Take time away from the comment section and social media. Take time away from looking at all of the crazy content. Focus on something that's positive. And I'm a content creator saying this, like this <laughs> is what I do for a living, yeah. but I do not focus on it. I focus on things that make me feel good. Okay. Yeah. Um, some of the places that I work, like I've worked um, in the prison and I see thousands mm -hmm. of men all over the place. Yeah. And um, I worked in a, a psych hospital and I see mm -hmm. men all over the place in the psych. Yeah. Area. Yeah. And so when you say shift your focus, that that seems like so major, like shift yeah. your focus yeah. on yourself, on the positive things, on joy. Right. And then um, this book you mentioned, The Top Shelf Wife. So, mm -hmm. God. so yep. yeah. But keep feeding yourself things that are positive. Mm -hmm. So you know, I am constantly growing, constantly feeding myself things that are positive. I'm constantly learning. And so that's what I'm encouraging that women do right now, because yeah, the culture from our music, from our social yeah. media influence, Definitely. yeah, Definitely it's very anti-marriage, anti-love. And the music and, gets into your subconscious and yes, 
Yes. Yes. So be be mindful. Right now, I'm going to be honest. I'm listening to music from the 80s and the 90s because it promotes love, it promotes marriage, it promotes men, you know, adoring women and, you know, oh my gosh, my woman is so wonderful. Like that's what I'm filling my spirit with. I'm not listening to anything current because it's just it's not positive. Okay, Anita, um I could talk to you all day. <laughs> But it looks like our time is running out. So okay. I think I will ask um, two questions. What would you leave for the audience? And then where can they contact you for more? Sure. Um, the one thing I want to leave with the audience is, again, to just focus on things that are positive, right? Try to focus on things that are positive. Focus on the things in their life that are going well. So every day I get up. I live in a beautiful home. It's warm inside. I have hot running water. You know, I am focused on so many things to be grateful for. And when they do that, God is going to give them more things to be grateful for. So instead of focusing on what they don't have, what they don't like, what isn't going well, I want you to try to shift your focus onto what is going great. And right now, I've been blessed that my platform is kind of like a ministry. You know, I want to help people. I want to see people grow uh, and be their best selves. So I want other people to do that too. Try to focus on what's going well, stay in a spirit of gratitude and um, be open, open to seeing things shift. And I think if we get enough people doing that, we'll start to see things shift. You can find me uh, by putting in Better Love Movement into a Google search. You'll find all of my platforms, Instagram, YouTube channel, um, Facebook, my website, which is being updated as we speak. So hopefully that'll be finished by the end of the month, but you can go there. It just doesn't have a lot on it. Um, and I offer coaching services through my website and um, yeah, Better Love Movement. You can find me pretty much everywhere by putting in that. Better Love Movement. Mm -hmm. All right. It sounds good, Anita. Thank you so much for uh, being on the show. You are welcome. Thank you for having me.